Every good vinaigrette starts out as an emulsion. So what is an emulsion? Well, it might be quicker to ask what isn't an emulsion because they're everywhere around us in the kitchen. Mayonnaise is an emulsion. Milk, cream, it's all emulsions. Right, a good pasta sauce is an emulsion, butter is an emulsion, and of course, a vinaigrette is an emulsion. So an emulsion is a homogenous mixture between two ingredients that don't normally like to mix together, but together they are greater than they are alone. Just like me and you, Katie. <laughs> That's right. I'm Kenji Lopez-Alt. And I'm Katie Quinn. And on this episode of The Food Lab, Emulsions. emulsions. Now, let's pretend for a second that Katie, the oil molecule. And Kenji, the water molecule. We just don't like each other. Yeah, pretend. Now, typically oil and vinegar, which is mostly water, they don't mix. They're actually physically repulsed by each other. Now, let's pretend there are thousands of little Katie and Kenji clones, all jammed together in one room. Left to their own devices, they'd separate like kids at a high school dance. Right, and that's exactly what happens when you combine oil and water in a cup and let it sit out for a while. It eventually coalesces and separates into layers. But now imagine there's an earthquake and all the little Katie and Kenji clones get jumbled all together. It makes them a lot harder to find each other. This is like what happens when you really vigorously mix that oil and vinegar. It's what we call a weak emulsion, and although it might look homogenous at the beginning, given enough time, it will also eventually separate into two distinct layers. What we really need to form a stable emulsion is one of these. A finger trap. No, it only looks like a finger trap to you. It's actually an emulsifier. It's what's gonna stick me to you. Now, this kind of emulsifier is called a surfactant, and it contains both hydrophobic, which means water-fearing, but for our purposes, oil-loving, and a hydrophilic end, which means water-loving. And this is what allows Katie and I to coexist harmoniously. Typically in a vinaigrette, there's actually gonna be several water molecules surrounding every single oil molecule. Lucky me. Culinarily speaking, those surfactants come in a few forms. Mustard and egg yolks are both common surfactants, and any good vinaigrette recipe probably has one of the two. Want a demo? Yeah, well we got two identical containers here. One of them has just oil and red wine vinegar. The other's got oil, vinegar, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. We're gonna shake them up at the same time and then see what happens. You ready to shake? Ready. All right, let's put them down. Okay, so you can see that clearly the one with no mustard separates way faster than the one with mustard, and that is chemistry in action. But oil, vinegar, and an emulsifier does not salad dressing make. Technique is at the heart of everything. Let's experiment. My basic salad dressing ratio is three parts oil, like this olive oil, and one part vinegar, like red wine, white wine, or balsamic, along with one third part Dijon mustard, salt and pepper, and any aromatics you like, like herbs, shallots, garlic. As fascinating as emulsions may be, are they really necessary? I mean, can I just throw oil and vinegar on my greens and call it a salad? Well, we set up a little experiment to find out. So we've got three identical bowls of greens here. The first one, we're gonna dress with oil alone. Now, the second one, we're gonna dress with vinegar alone. Finally, the third one we're gonna dress with a properly emulsified vinaigrette. By the way, the best way to emulsify a vinaigrette is to put it in a container like this and shake it. Now we're gonna transfer the greens to this strainer over a bowl to catch any drippings and see what happens. So it's been about five minutes, now let's see what we've got. So the first bowl was oil alone and it looks like there's no drippings at all, which is good because that means all of the oil is stuck to the leaves. You see, leaves have this waxy oil-based cuticle on them that's designed to keep the weather out, and that is the perfect surface for oil to cling to. Now let's check out the vinegar. So here we can see that, well, pretty much all of the vinegar has dripped right off of those greens, and that's because of that weather barrier. It's as if every single leaf is wearing a teeny tiny little raincoat. Anything water-based just slides right off. So the vinegar has bright flavor, but it doesn't stick to your greens. Finally, let's check out the properly emulsified vinaigrette. And again, it looks like this one, like the oil, has zero drippings. Everything is right on those greens, including the vinegar. So that's good news for us because that means that these greens are gonna have bright, acidic flavor. What's more, a properly emulsified vinaigrette will actually protect those greens from the full raw power of the oil. So not only do your greens taste better, but they also look better and last longer.
Now we get to one of my favorite culinary emulsions, mayonnaise. As a kid, I never really liked this stuff because we always got the commercial jars and I just don't trust things that jiggle like that, you know? <laughs> Homemade mayo, on the other hand, is light, creamy, flavor-packed, and incredible. All you need is eggs, oil, lemon juice, and mustard. Like a vinaigrette, mayonnaise is actually an oil in water emulsion. The difference is that it's a much more stable emulsion than a salad dressing, and you have a much higher proportion of oil to liquid. Such a high proportion, in fact, that it actually becomes thick enough to hold its shape. Right, but to make such a stable emulsion, you can't just shake it up. It just doesn't come together. You can't break the oil and water down into fine enough droplets. Traditionally, mayonnaise is made by slowly drizzling oil into a bowl with egg yolks, lemon juice, and mustard. You wanna pour the oil for me while I whisk? Yeah. Now the idea is that you whisk it really, really vigorously while you're adding the oil in a thin, steady stream. But if you accidentally add the oil too fast, Katie, would you? Uh, your mayonnaise breaks and it's almost impossible to get it to come back together again. You have to start over completely. And even if you do manage to get a good mayo, and that takes considerable wrist action, it's never gonna be as thick as a real mayonnaise. If, on the other hand, you got one of these guys, you're just about a minute away from excellent homemade mayo. All you need is two eggs, a dollop of mustard, a teaspoon of lemon juice, and a little bit of water in the bottom of a jar that just fits the head of a blender blade. Fill it up with oil by about a cup and a half, then put it down on a table and stick that blender blade all the way in the bottom. As your blade spins, it creates a vortex, and that vortex slowly draws oil downward, incorporating it just a tiny bit at a time. As you slowly pull the blade head up through the mixture, more and more oil gets incorporated until there. Perfect mayonnaise in less than a minute. I'd rub that on my sandwich. Oh. The really awesome part is that you can make hollandaise using this exact same method. Just leave out the mustard, replace the oil with hot melted butter, and you've got one of the world's most difficult culinary sauces in a fraction of the time and with no practice at all. Mastering the art of emulsions opens up all kinds of possibilities. Beyond surfactants, there are physical emulsifiers, things like cornstarch and flour. Or honey or gelatin. The thing about emulsions is that they are always thicker than either of their two constituents on their own. Mayonnaise is way thicker than egg yolks or oil. Right, and just look at the two of us. Now that we've been properly emulsified, we're thick as thieves. Right. 